dying. Kyle, I was just thinking about it on the walk over. I was like, if I don't leave now, statistically, you and I, one of us is going to get broken. I'm going to get hurt. <laughs> uh, this was good. This is good. <laughs> Nobody broke I'm anything still here this time. Oh, uh, wait, Ryan's, Ryan's here. still here. Ryan's got to leave. I have an interesting collection of electric motorcycles, bikes, and other things right now. So I thought, why don't we do the world's quietest drag race? Throw all of these up against each other and see who comes out on top. So let's go through the contenders. First up, we have a brand new bike from Velocifero. They have two different models. This is the Jump, the Scrambler model with some knobby tires. They also have a street version. Now, a lot of people look at this and they think, oh cool, a little kid's motorcycle. And it really is quite small. It's like Honda Grom size, but this thing is 100% street legal. It has turn signals, headlights, high beam, low beam, disc brakes, front and rear. There's a spot to mount a license plate in the back. It's running a 5,000 watt rear hub motor. And I really do mean street legal. Right there is the VIN number. Down here is the California emissions label. Over here we have the federal safety data plate. So this is something you can actually get licensed and registered on the road. Think of this not as a little off-road dirt bike, but actually as a Honda Grom competitor that is electric. More videos to come on this. Iahora M1 PS, also a 5,000 watt hub motor. Oh yeah, that's a 72 volt system. This is also a 72 volt system. So obviously very different styling, but maybe in a drag race, these would actually be pretty comparable. Now you like that low rider? The chopper! <laughs> the chopper! <laughs> it's so ridiculous. I like it. It's cool. I mean, I could definitely ride this around all day long. And here's another new one. This is actually a prototype. This is not even out in the wild yet, but this is from HMP. It's called the Lightning. And yeah, it's a scooter. And I would say this is kind of a surprise fan favorite, if you will. But that one was getting it off the line. It, it goes good off the line, but then it just runs out. There's a few different reasons I like it. I'm gonna do a whole video on this thing, but this right here, I mean, the amount of storage space you have underneath the seat. Also running, like the other two bikes, a rear hub motor, surprisingly quick, and it's gonna be surprisingly affordable. Also a 72 volt system. Uh, instead of lithium ion batteries, they're using lithium phosphate. So very long lifetime batteries, a little bit heavier, but the thing still takes off quite fast. And then we have my custom trike. This really started out life as a Litra Velo Mobile from Denmark. I have modified it quite extensively to run two Grin EV all axle hub motors up front, pushing about 2,500 watts through each. So also about 5,000 watts of peak power like these other three, but just using a very unique setup. I really like riding this thing, but out of all of these, it is the sketchiest and the one that people were most afraid to try. I don't see anybody fighting to ride that one. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> We're not. The main reason is my drivetrain setup being two front hub motors with individual throttles that you have to control. So I have two triggers right here. 
So this one does this motor, this one does the other motor, so you have differential power, which makes the handling really fun in the turns if you know how to use it, but it can be a little awkward getting used to. Now everything up to this point has been about 5,000 watts. We get up to the Rivet Anthem. Of course, we've got just shy of 20,000 watts, over 300 pound-feet of torque. Also the same drivetrain on the Rivet Outset. Of course, those are gonna be the dominating bikes out of this race, and it was really awesome to get to race the two different bikes side by side. Now, I would have thought they would accelerate exactly the same because they have the same battery. They have the same ASI controller on both of these. They have the same belt drive with the same gearing. The only difference between these two is the tires and the suspension. And I thought that the Rivet Anthem with its slightly stickier tires was gonna get the drop or the launch every single time. And for some reason, that turned out not to be the case. It's not, I'm, I'm more So this one's the this one clear one. Um, that, yeah. That. I think that's all it needs because you guys were neck and neck. You just had that gap. It takes off. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel a difference yeah, between the two? Faster than the they should be the same. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> that one? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. more torque. Oh, yeah. that, one's easier, to, yeah. that one's easier to ride a wheelie. What was your name? Huh. I'm that one? Eventually you get up to top speed and it goes a little more. Fast. Everybody riding these two bikes felt that the outset had a hair more torque but then the Anthem, it seemed like, would catch up for some reason, and it's a very, very slight difference. I've never even noticed it riding each of the bikes, but if you're a little wheelie hungry, uh, you might notice the subtle difference, or if you race them side by side. So our working theory as of right now, and after talking to Dong Tran, the CEO of Rivet, is that the difference could just be the suspension, the way the suspension is designed on the outset, you can actually put that power to the ground a little bit quicker until you get a slightly better launch. That's our theory. Johnny's got the speed racer. Oh yeah, you gotta take that. You gotta give it the best shot and we're gonna get dizzy. I think so. Yeah. I'm just gonna go way left. I told Jesse to leave his window down so he could yell out. <laughs> Don't crash in there. But the final contender we decided to throw in at the end of this race was a Tesla Model S. Not the newest plaid, but a four-wheel drive Model S nonetheless. And as you can see from this clip, I actually got the jump on the Model S at the launch. Got a good like half car length ahead with the outset. You guys ready? Yep. Three, two, one, go. And then, of course, the Tesla blows by us all. Yeah. <laughs> but I did not think it was going to be that close. That was very impressive that off the line, the Rivet can not only keep up, but be ahead of it for a little bit. So out of all of these bikes, here's my conclusion. The Rivet Outset, the Rivet Anthem, both amazingly fun, amazingly good values. Which one you should go for it really just depends on your riding style. I've put over 500 miles personally on the outset. I've now put a fair number of miles on the Anthem and I really love the styling of the outset. I do think at the deal they've been running like $59.95 with the ASI controller, that's one of the best value electric motorcycles you can buy if not the best, but it's a little more upright in the riding position. And when I hit the turns, I found that I do prefer the peg position and the suspension setup, the tire setup of the Anthem. For some reason, that just suits my riding style a little bit more. The trike, super fun, but unlike these other bikes, which are stable, you can kind of view the scenery as you ride around. This, you have to stay on top of 100%. Pay attention to what you're doing 100% of the time. Uh, or else it will bite you. So, so I guess you could say that this one is the most thrilling to ride, offers maybe uh, some of the most adrenaline rush, but only because of its sketchy nature, not because it's actually faster. I am planning on adding a full aerodynamic body to this thing. I'll show that build progress in future videos. That of course is not gonna help the acceleration, but it is gonna help the top speed 
hopefully the stability at high speed. It's gonna be a big project, but I'm gonna get that done. The HMP Lightning is supposed to be under $3,000 when it launches, which is gonna be just a killer value for something with a 72 volt, 30 amp hour battery, that amount of storage, that amount of power. They left this with me to ride it for a while and just see if I had any feedback. And so far, I can't say that I've really found anything wrong with it or anything that I would change. It's comfortable. It already has a big seat for two people with a backrest. It has a side stand and a center stand. It's got disc brakes on it. It stops really well. It handles great. I have really carved this thing through the turns around on the roads around here. So I genuinely don't know what I would change. If this is really gonna launch for under $3,000, this is gonna be a good deal. The Eohora was unfortunately one of these slower things. I was not surprised by that. It definitely has a very soft start to it. I'm hoping I can do some tweaking to this thing to make it faster. If I can get that working, I will show that in a future video. I just released a video showing how I got this thing licensed and plated legally. But on their spec sheet for their website, they say that this is running at 70 amps, which lines up perfectly with the dyno run that I did on this. But I pulled this cover off, looked inside, and this is actually a 150 amp controller. So they're running it at just under half the max current of the motor controller. There are some other limitations. Under the battery here, there is a breaker that's set to 100 amps. But still, if I can crank that up close to 100 amps without changing any hardware, just by programming, it might be possible to get this thing accelerating a bit faster. So stay tuned, I'm gonna try it. And I'll do some more filming video stuff on the Velocifero. Everybody loved this, they thought it was an awesome Honda Grom competitor. This was usually off the line in third place right after the two rivet bikes. They're gonna be in like the 4,000 some dollar range on price. And that is really good for a street legal electric motorcycle. I think these things are gonna sell really well. Maybe it's something you'll see at Area 13. Uh, we're working on that. 4,000 some dollars, about five grand for the Eohora. Gonna be under three for the Lightning. Uh, don't even wanna talk about what that costs. The rivet bikes at around 6,000, 6,500, absolute bargain. But which one of these would you choose just to ride on a daily basis? Leave me a comment down below. I wanna know which one is your favorite. And if you guys really like this video, if you are reasonably close to Grass Valley and you've got something that you think would make a good competitor, maybe you can bring it by and we'll do some more drag races. But if you wanna see any of those following videos I just mentioned, make sure to hit the subscribe button. I will definitely be back for more electric motorcycle and bicycle content. I didn't even know I had an alarm. I did nothing. That's the great